ocean, a critical resource for America's economy. It provides us with food, with valuable oil, gas, and mineral deposits, with a marine transportation system that carries goods to and from our shores, linking the United States with trade partners around the globe. An understanding of the ocean makes people realize that no matter where you live in the United States, no matter where you live in the world, you are dependent on the services of the ocean, from the way it moderates weather, to the way it provides food, to the way that 90% of all goods that go from one country to another travel by ship. It's all about the jobs. 66 million jobs are generated out of our coastal communities. That's 40% of all of the jobs in America. And if we were to show you our maps, the data that we've collected, every inch of that ocean is used at some point in time. And the conflicts are starting to increase. Marine planning is about making sure that we have the jobs from shipping, from fishing, from tourism, from beach going. If we get this right, marine spatial planning for sustainable economic development, we could triple America's coastal economy. When we're looking to try to develop jobs, marine spatial planning allows us to, to streamline that process. The National Ocean Policy is designed to address a multitude of uses and marine renewable energy being one of those. And a large part of that is getting state and federal agencies to work together. The National Ocean Policy is going to provide a clear way ahead so that anyone who wants to use the waters is going to find a framework where they can apply for uh, permits for business activity. The wind industry will potentially transform our economy. As you look at the Northeast, the largest potential in the renewable energy area is in offshore energy. I think it makes so much more sense to go through the planning effort first. It'll make the permitting process that much easier. By the time you get to where we come in with leasing the area for access to develop renewable energy, because you've had that dialogue in the beginning, maybe you have eliminated obvious conflicts and people can focus then on opportunities. Fisheries are, are one of the uh, sectors that are most likely to be impacted by spatial management or spatial development offshore, and so they want to feel that they have some buy into the process. In my opinion, and I think a lot of fishermen's eyes, the number one stakeholder in this whole process is the resource themselves, the fish. The Ocean SAMP was the vehicle that we used. It's recognized at the federal level as a tool, an effective coastal management tool. And what we found with the Ocean SAMP is not only do we want to put offshore renewable energy out there, but we have a huge recreational and commercial fishing industry. We have an amazing wildlife that, that uses these resources and municipalities depend upon the tourism industry. There are other countries in the world, such as Germany. It did its marine spatial plan, it implemented it, renewable energy, space for marine transportation, short sea shipping. The marine spatial planning that they did 15 years ago has had demonstrable benefits. The Europeans are perhaps more advanced than the U.S. in marine spatial planning really starting with all of the North Sea oil. How do you get fishing and oil and other activities to live together and have now a number of wind farms in their marine areas? We in the U.S. don't have any. So currently we have uh, already uh, a zone for offshore wind energy and we have already some turbines operational. The U.K. has attributed $779 million and potential savings that will come out of their marine spatial planning efforts. The reason why we need to plan is to ensure that, that the existing activities are honored and enhanced, but we're also encouraging new development. It's just a smart way to do your business operations, so you don't dedicate a lot of scarce capital to developing a proposal in an area that is going to be just populated by a lot of challenges. The National Ocean Policy just builds on that common sense business approach. This is all about sustainable economic development. Oceans and coasts really matter. We're an ocean nation. Decision makers will change. Society will change. The values will change. And the environment is changing beneath us so that uh, the best we can do 
is to have good information, have an open mind. Ocean planning is a process. We need to plan for the future, and that's what marine planning is all about. It's really how do we look out to the next generation and the generation after that and make sure we plan for the future in what's going to be hopefully a very compatible, economically viable, and ecologically viable state for our future. Thank you.